So I really don't want to kill them. I promise now, I'm saying this on tape. I do not want to kill them. And I've tried ridiculous things to calm down about big... I've really gone on a voyage in my 20s. I've tried everything. I even looked into Tantra and yoga and things like that, things that I thought might cleanse my spirit on the inside. And I went to this thing called a Tantric Yoga Retreat. Uh, the real reason I went was this. The lady said, you come to my Tantric Away Day, at the end of the exercises, you have what Ian Tantra call a heart orgasm. Yeah, all right. <laughs> You'd have a go, wouldn't you? Someone said, get in that shed, I'll make your heart jizz. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll give it a crack. What it turned out to be is a shed and this woman who had filthy beanbags. <laughs> That's not a euphemism. Actual... <laughs> Look at my filthy beanbags. <laughs> I'll let you touch them. That's tantra. <laughs> the actual circle of filthy beanbags that you have to sit on, like, oh, God. Oh, that hasn't come out of a heart. <laughs> you sit round on these beanbags, and she stands in the middle, and she says stuff like, uh, OK, we're going to talk about Tantra today, and it's, it's just a way of sort of understanding and controlling your chakras. Um, now, if you don't know what a chakra is, of course, it's a point in your body at which the energy of the universe resonates, OK? <laughs> and then there would be this noise from everyone else in the room, mainly sort of middle-aged ladies, it has to be said. They would make this noise where they go, hmm. That was the noise of agreement. They go, yeah, chakras. Mm. And I couldn't help it. My noise was just a bit more... Meh. <laughs> it sounded like a whale orgy that someone had thrown a kitten into. <laughs> and I kept having to remind myself, you don't know this, John. Don't prejudge. Go in there. I wouldn't say I went in with my mind open, because um, I don't believe you should leave your mind open. You wouldn't leave your front door open. Why would you leave your mind open? <laughs> Any shit can get in and out then, can't it? I, I sort of... It wasn't even a jar. I leave my mind on the latch. It may appear closed to passers-by, but a breeze of knowledge will blow it wide open. So I'm, I'm sitting in there thinking, at any point I'm going to really get into this, I want to feel something. She said, OK, we're going to do the exercise now, we're going to do the exercise, what's going to happen? I'm going to go over here, I'm just going to put on some jungle sounds, uh, which turned out to be sounds of the jungle, not like... <laughs> which I think is jungle music. <laughs> I've never actually heard any. I'm going to put on some jungle sounds, we're going to drop an E and chill the fuck out. I would have soiled myself if that had happened. <laughs> I've never done drugs. I like drink, I don't do drugs. Because drink just goes, oh, I'm thinking about that, are you? Not anymore. <laughs> That's a valid thing. Drugs, I think, you've still got all the problems you had, but now you can't get upstairs because I made a fish. <laughs> Why would you do that to yourself? I wouldn't be one of those cool... You know, some people are cool, they do drugs. Like, oh, God, it was a party. I ended up having a full conversation with Bob Dylan. It was amazing. I would be like, yeah, I went to a party. There was a fucking dragon there. <laughs> No-one told me I didn't have a sword, did I? No. <laughs> Smoked myself in the bathroom and cried for a bit. <laughs> so she said, I'm going to put on some jungle sounds, which were like, boom ba ba boom ba and, like, rustling leaves and... Uh, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> If you've been to the jungle, you can laugh, but otherwise, I'll tell you, that's a very accurate portrayal of the sounds. <laughs> uh, she said, what happens? I want you to, when you feel comfortable, just rise out of the beanbag. That was my favourite bit. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to rise out of the beanbag, and what I want you to do, I just want you to move around the room, expressing yourself with movement, right? <laughs> and for me, that turned out to be this. This <laughs> is how I express myself with movement, sort of marauding sex pest. <laughs> Yeah, real bums and titties. <laughs> and she said, the key to the exercise, what I want you to do, I want you to take a big, deep breath in, and then I want you to exhale. But when you exhale, what you must do is you must vocalise, OK? So I need you to just make a noise as the air exits your body, right? And the ladies interpreted this in what I would describe as quite a horny manner. <laughs> they make some quite sexy noises, like, oh, oh, oh. But horny ones. I recognise that's not a horny noise. I can't even do it when I try. I like, know well, that's not horny, is it? Like, See you in the morning. <laughs> but they're moving around like, oh, oh, and I tried to do that. But the problem is, taking a deep breath and making a noise as you exhale, that is the definition of a sigh. And it's very hard not to just sound mardy. <laughs> I was just in the room going, oh, <laughs> oh bloody hell. And I also discovered, not to compound the stereotypes of men and multitasking, but I couldn't move and do the noise at the same time. <laughs> so I ended up just sort of chasing these women around the room. 
How? How? Like a really mardy ghost. <laughs> and it went on for ages. I sort of knew quite early on this probably isn't the thing for me. But it went on for ages and ages and... Ah! And eventually she stopped the music and I thought, well, now we're all going to say what we felt about that. Because I've got some pretty potent views. <laughs> and everyone else went, oh, my God, I feel amazing. I feel so connected. I feel like, you know, the cycle of my breath is part of life and I'm privileged to be a part of that, you know, the universe. And she asked me, and I, I just, I couldn't lie, could I? She said, what did you feel? And you can't be rude. If you've gone to someone, you have to be polite to them. If they'd pulled that shit in my front room, I would have told them what I thought. <laughs> I just felt like, you know, you're all fucking mad. <laughs> if you don't get out of the way of the telly, I'm probably gonna start stabbing. <laughs> I had to be polite, so I just said, um, I don't know, I didn't really feel anything. My shoulders are quite tense. <laughs> I'm really sorry, because I didn't mean to bring negative energy into the group. <laughs> oh, she's going to be angry. She's going to be angry with this. And she wasn't. She was so relaxed. She just looked at me. She said, that's OK, that's OK, John. We sometimes find men will arrive at these groups with these sorts of problems. Can I just ask very quickly, um, are you putting your finger up your anus in the bath? <laughs> and the reason I left a pause is so she could laugh. Because where I'm from, if you ask someone if they put their finger up their arse, the only response is to laugh. <laughs> do you uh, pop your finger up your arse, do you? <laughs> Give me that tenor, I told you I'd ask. She really waited. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to answer this. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. It really felt like she wanted me to say yes. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to say, oh, yeah, I'll put my finger right up there. Yeah, regular. <laughs> I'm still worried that she'd go, oh, you pig. <laughs> uh, oh, I was only joking. Do uh. <laughs> you think that's why you might be unhappy? Because you can't leave your ring piece alone for five minutes. <laughs> oh. oh, that's disgusting. Oh, I shook your hand on the way in here. <laughs> oh. God, you are a filth bag. So I thought, if you don't know, it's always best to be honest. So I just said, uh, n n n no. And, and it, really, this is the first time I've seen that as a problem. <laughs> now, up until now, if I get out of the bath and nothing's gone up my arse, <laughs> I'd probably tick that off as a good bath. <laughs> no, off we go! <laughs> if I'm having to fish the toilet duck out of there, then <laughs> that was a mistake. That's probably the result of a fall or anything else I might choose to tell the paramedic. <laughs> And she said, no, men have to do this, John. Men have to learn to self-honour. That's how she described it, in this way. As if there's any honour involved in what she meant. <laughs> Today I have honoured myself fully. She said, men have to self-honour in this way because as a man gets older, um, what he's never understood... And this is a lesson for any men in the audience who are getting older, which is all of them. <laughs> Unless you've invented a time machine. Um, men have never understood that when they ejaculate, um, what they're, they're not just giving out semen, they're giving... I'm sorry. They really threw that into <laughs> She said, men aren't just giving out semen. <laughs> she said, they're giving out life force. That's what's happening when a man ejaculates. He gives out life force. And that combines with the life force that's inside the woman. And it combines to make a new person. That's part of the journey of life force. And, of course, as a man gets older, he can't keep giving it out. He's got to keep hold of it in order to promote his life and, and live longer. And she said it with such confidence that just for a second, I totally went with it. <laughs> Just for a second, I was like, yeah! All these women stealing my life force. <laughs> I mean, by women, I mean socks, but she doesn't know. <laughs> really none of her business. It's the same process. And then as quickly as that arrives, it leaves. You think, well, no, hang on, this is bullshit. This is nonsense, because what she's saying is, all old men die of a wank. <laughs> Unless a doctor comes around at some point in your life and says, I'm here to tell you, Mr Richardson, you've got one left. OK. <laughs> Yeah. I like doing that. I know you do. That's why you've only got one left. <laughs> You're not going to do it when I leave, are you? No. Bye, Doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I said to her, I just don't believe that, because people don't... They don't stop doing stuff, do you? As you get older, you still enjoy yourself. And she said, no, of course you don't, John. Of course you don't. What you're going to learn today is a process that we use in Tantra. It's going to help you carry on having fun uh, and live longer as well. She said, we're going to teach you a process. It's called injaculation. 
and it really is as horrific as it sounds. <laughs> She said, what it is, it's a way of, uh, when you get to the end of the experience, controlling your breathing and controlling your muscles in such a way that instead of it going out, it goes back in. <laughs> no. We <laughs> don't seem to understand. I can't sleep if I haven't cleaned the kitchen worktops. <laughs> I, I can't go to bed having ejaculated into myself. <laughs> Are you implying that it goes? <laughs> if I sneeze on a train, like, <laughs> months worth of it up there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Injaculation, isn't it? We all have to learn as we get older. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>